hot seat. Here we go, hot seat. There we are. We are live. It is, you know, there's something special, I think, Andy, about uh, uh, game number seven, right? There is a lot of things special about game seven if there's a game being played. If there is a game being played, I think there's going to be a game being played. I, I, I'm kind of behind on the news, but uh, I hear baseball might be back. I hear uh, hockey might have a season, NBA might have So season. the one thing I read today, and, and you, you know me well, I try not to read the news, um, but I was on a call and the ESPN thing flashed something about the NBA July 31st. Okay. So that would be nice to have to have a game seven. But I did hear something about soccer. Um, and soccer looked like they were proposing a different playoff format from an original one. So maybe that will happen as well. Be kind of cool to have Major League Soccer. Um, I don't know anything about baseball coming back. You know, I, I would love to have a baseball game to go see. Um, you, know, you know, Mike Oz. Uh, yeah. Twitter. He posted something on Yahoo Sports, and I haven't read it yet, but he mentioned that Major League Baseball missed an opportunity, but that they, they're still going to have a few. So i, I got to get to get details on that um, because we need support. Well, nevertheless, it is Game 7. Hard to believe we've had seven weeks of this. Time goes by, and uh, maybe someday, week, game, very soon, we could be doing this live in person. Maybe we maybe we should just like say it's a couple weeks away. Yeah, we can be optimistic and say that. Hey, um, so I, I want to. Well, first of all, do you have some local? I did. So it's almost gone though because it was so dang good. Um, I got three different appetizers from Heirloom. Shout out to those guys at uh, Heirloom Eats, and this is a cashew popcorn cauliflower. Oh, it is so good. I guess yeah. you have to like vegetables for it to be good. And then um, Jess got mushroom taquitos and then uh, their bread and hummus. Um, so hopefully there's some of that when we're done. They're, um, they're, they're killing it over at Heirloom. And so um, they yeah. won virtually every food award this year. Yeah. yeah. They're doing an amazing job. Um, I, I know our guest is a food fan. So if he's ever visiting Fresno, I'm sure. You will have to partake in that. I, uh, you know, I grew up in the Fresno. I, I know I have an echo. Uh, Sorry, I, bro, up, I can't hear it. No, okay. I grew up in the uh, Fresno High area, Andy, and not too far from my house, a place called the Beer Rock Shop. Yeah. Do you remember? Now, the original location was over on Clinton and, um, well, not west, but uh, over in that area, Mark, Clinton and Mark's area. You, do you remember it from there? It was closer to the freeway. Yes. I don't know the cross street, but the one that I've always gone to in recent days is Bullard and Marks. Bullard and West, sorry. Bullard and West. And hands down, probably the best beer rock in town. However, they're better known for their hamburgers. Oh, dude. I'm glad you said that. They actually have the best hamburger in town. So good. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a secret no one really knows about it but yeah best best hamburgers in town uh but i got so you know i'm keto yeah. right gave me some gave me some shit last week about not having something here that i could actually eat or, or drink and so one thing you don't know about the beer shop is you can order the filling outside of their their bread and so i've got dude that sounds amazing it's really good <laughs> because the you can well, buy a the, car the, the carbs on one of those I'm Russian, so we would call it something besides a beer rock. Uh, but the carbs on that outer deal has got to be huge. Yeah, there's, there, there's uh, on the whole on the regular there must be, but on this there's nothing zero. It's fantastic. Hey, we got a lot to talk about with our guests, and I wanted to. Talk, I was going to bring up some market stats, but I think I'm curious what's going on in in, our, in, in Kenny's market too. So, Mr. Kenny Trong. Uh, most people, I think, in the real estate world, if they, they, they know him as in fast, right? He did the hashtag fast agent uh, a few years ago, which was just absolutely brilliant. Um, and so there's nobody in this, uh, I think, in the real estate world who's up on tech systems and processes, uh, the newest, latest, greatest gadget than, than Mr. Kenny Fast. So uh, we've got him, Andy. We've got him for game seven. Yeah. 
It's a way to bring in the uh, – it's like bringing in the ace twice in a seven-game seven series. Right? <laughs> hey, Kenny, you're welcome. Um, and, yes, Scott, Marple, thank you for watching and joining us. Uh, Heather, thank you. Yes, our, 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 our – uh, food is delicious, and I promise by next week I'll get our echo thing solved. I don't know why that's jumping on the last two, but hey, Kenny, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for joining uh, Andy and I on the tailgate. Uh, how are you? I'm good, man. Thanks for thanks for an invite. So those hey, somebody know. somebody said Jason that if you mute your side and keep talking, it's fine. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, Kenny, tell everyone uh, where you are, like in the marketplace, and uh, what's going on in your neck of the woods. Uh, my books, my business is focused in Oakland. I've, I've been in business for ten years. Uh, I have a team of twenty that I ESP where it's St. Brokerage. Actually, St. Brokerage is you two. Actually, now now look at it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Market market is picking up here. We have a lot of listings that are kind of sitting uh, pre-COVID. Uh, unfortunately, I wish I had a great stats to share, but. I have eight listings on the market right now, and average days is like 39 days. Uh, so the stuff we have right now isn't moving that fast, but we're out there. We wrote a ton of offers this week, um, like at least seven of them. We, we all got rejected on. So we're, we're competing against like four offers, 10 offers, 30. It's, uh, it's a tale of two different worlds out here. I think the new stuff coming on, the inventory that people haven't seen yet is doing really well. It sounds like, it sounds like our, our uh, game six would be a good, uh, good show for your team. <laughs> yeah, we on, on game six, Kenny, we covered uh, ways to get your offer, uh, increase your chances of your team getting their offer accepted. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you've heard most of the different ways, but we can talk to some, I think, some pretty new creative stuff in this market to give a little bit of, a, of an advantage. Um, but so what's the average price point in Oakland these days? Uh, like high sevens, about 770. And an interesting story is most of the a lot of our buyers are now shopping further away. They're going like to Tracy and Stockton and Discovery Bay and Brentwood, uh, which where they weren't really shopping with last year. So now, what just you know, convenience of working from home and people more open to working a little further, people are uh, exploring their options a lot more. So, so Kenny, I, I saw this. Um, I'm sure you saw the same article, the Zillow survey about. Um, Seventy-seven percent of the people that have been working from home um, would prefer to work from home to continue when people are going back. And then it was something like two-thirds of that group said, "And if we were allowed to work from home, we would move out of the major metropolitan area into an area like Fresno." I inserted that last part um, <laughs> uh, because of affordability, because of quality of life, because of schools, and so on. Yeah. Any thoughts on that? Any impact you see happening in your neck of the woods? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I, I had my biggest month uh, last month for referrals. I had about 13 agents reach out to me, referrals from a lot of secondary markets like uh, Portland or Vegas or Houston, which is, I mean, we, we, we get referrals normally from there, but like, I think last month was the most, most migration I've seen. So the story is like a lot of people are just trying to get out the Bay Area. You know, we're in San Francisco Bay Area where it's super, super dense. You know, a lot of vertical housing uh, in San Francisco and San Jose where average price is easily like 1200 square foot for, for a condo. So you can get, you buy something for half that price and triple that size, just like an hour away. Are you, are you guys seeing a lot of migration from the East Bay right now? No, not yet. I haven't gotten it from the East Bay, but I have from the city of San Francisco itself. Um, a few agents, one, two, three agents have contacted me in the last few weeks to say that they're putting their person's house on the market and they're moving and they're interested in looking at Fresno. What's the average price in Fresno for like a, I don't know, 12, 1,500 square feet house? Or that small on that side? Uh, most of them are out there. 1,500, Andy, 1,500 square feet is what we would refer to as average. And uh, sales, average sales price is about 300,000. No. So we, we got half yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I uh, actually had a listing appointment today. These folks are uh, in Concord and they had some rentals in Fresno. And so I, I met them at one of them and then we just kind of talked about the other two because we couldn't get in. Uh, but she was mentioning to me that uh, she couldn't 
This house is a two bedroom, one bath, 1100 square feet in Fresno. It rents out for $1,100. And she said in her market that it would be at least a $700,000 house. Um, and she didn't even know what the rent would be. Um, so big difference between our markets. Mm -hmm. But still an inventory issue, right? Yeah, I looked yesterday um, in the city of Oakland. We had about 389 active listings, what 270 pending. So we have only about maybe about six weeks of inventory. So still very, very low inventory. That's awesome. I mean, it's uh, great for sellers, homeowners. We're, we're putting together our May staff, and Cassie handed to me just before the show went live. In May 2019, the average sale price in this Fresno Clovis in Fresno Clovis was 312,000, with the 31 days on market. This May, the average was 339, with a 24 day average on market. Um, last May 2019, we sold 649 listings that month. This May, 398. Wow, so half. Half. Yeah. I feel like the, the demand is still there. Everything, everyone I've talked to, is, um, you know, the Zillow searches, the incoming leads, um, the Google Trends, everything is showing that people are very, very um, active. And the, 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 the want and need for buying a new home exceeds like the, you know, the safety precaution about COVID. So I think people are just being extra careful, but they're willing to. Uh, I think you're risking the shop. Yeah, I think you nailed it, Andy. I do too. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm just getting. I'm reading the comments. People are texting me directly, saying the echo is really bad. Jay, is there any chance you have a mic, different mic on your end? I do. Why don't we, you gonna talk to Kenny? Yeah. And get him started on what we're talking about. Yep. I'll get my mic, my other mic set up, and we'll see if that helps. Yeah. No thanks. So, Kenny, I, if if I'm not mistaken. Did I think we may have met? Did you used to be a part of the Ari Bar Camps? Yeah, uh, I think the first one in Berkeley or by the water. Yeah, Is that where I think met? I think I met you back then. Um, Jason actually was the one that turned me on to him. It's got to be what ten plus years ago, right? Yeah, ten. Because your name came out. Like, I know that name somewhere, and I was like, I know I haven't got a referral or interact out. I know that name for sure because you have a very unique name. That's well, I'm 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 glad it wasn't you know. That guy, that guy. Um, and when Jason said, hey, what do you think about having Kenny on the show? I said, perfect. This is, I got to see um, your presentation um, in our, for our business partners, uh, Kyle and Dan's oh, presentation a month or so ago. You and I joined EXP very similar time frame to each other. And so it's, it's awesome to be able to leverage the, um, you know, the intellectual property, if you will, of our organization. And uh, we just appreciate you taking time out of your busy week to uh, to contribute to what we're trying to do, which is just help people have ideas and inspiration to help them do more deals. And uh, sometimes it's real estate. Sometimes we have a doctor on this show and talking about and COVID. Uh, and yes, last week, you guys had a doctor? I, I browsed through two, some of the videos two, today. Two weeks ago. Nice. nice. Um, and it was it's it's a it's definitely a, a replay worthy show because there was some quality lines. I asked him, you'll appreciate this. I asked him, so if we were going to do an open house post COVID, you know, after all this is over, what risk management advice would you give an agent? Without hesitation, he said, "Don't lick your clients." <laughs> <laughs> and somebody commented that was watching T-shirts ordered. <laughs> it's done. It's done. But anyways, we we wanted to. We know you're a lot smarter than than most in the area of technology and and business. And we wanted to say, you know, share a little bit about cool things that are going on tech apps. Um, I really wanted you to kind of take it away and and talk it up. Tell us what you'd like to to uh, to share with the business leaders that are watching and the, sure. the real estate um, people. Well, I told Jason I didn't have a presentation because that that the thing you saw that gave I done that. Exactly the exact same thing. Sometimes like, I don't really want to do the same thing over again. Uh, I talk about some of the new tools we're using. Uh, we're really happy about Sisu. Have you guys? A lot of big teams are using Sisu, and I really like it. So let me see if I can share my screen. Yeah, so we we've been using Sisu since uh, 
Hey, Jay, I, can you make uh, Kenny the solo presenter so he can share his screen full screen here? Thanks, man. Yeah, so I looked into this product right before COVID, and then we finally had time during, um, I don't know, since Shutter in Place started to. Is it shared? I can't see what's going on. No, it's not shared. Oh. So you're, you're you're using Sisu. What's your CRM? Uh, CRM we're using is Chime. We're really really happy with Chime. So I yeah. I, I mean there I I've been down Sync, Firepoint, all the good ones for a long time. But we, we landed on Chime when it was in beta, and then we've stuck to it since then. Um, Sisu is really good because then we, you know with other place it's hard to have the, the the team meetings. So here we're having team members track things like um, email or social media posts how many buyer formats they've had and email blasts. So I'll give an example of what the numbers have looked like in the last, this is May. Um, I haven't updated in two weeks, so this will be up behind. But I can tell you that Dewey and Jen and my team have worked about 115 hours, so about 30 hours a week. And then let's see how many appointments ours have been on. Wow, okay, we have an agent of 34 showings. Maybe she put the number of houses she looked at. That's awfully high. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we, we've had agents do, uh, let me do this month too. Yeah, so we're tracking a number of showings. We have 14 showings from this agent. And then something that, a lot of this was from the Tom Ferry pivot. The things that you might track now that you did before was like social media, because you're engaging with clients, how many times you're posting, or, uh, I mean, here's the one with a lot of call, right? Uh, let's see. Recruiting calls. I, I uh, let's see a personal snapshot. Yeah, here's my numbers um, from last week. And then something else we're using a lot is Slack. Let me see what's. Hey, Kenny, before you switch off of uh, Sisu, <laughs> it looks to me like you're using the version that you're manually entering everything um, off of the uh, off of the app on the phone. Um, I use Sisu connected to Sierra. Uh, Zapier is the connection. Um, Sierra Interactive. You know this? Sierra Interactive is CRM that I'm using. Um, I know Jason, you're still Boomtown, right? Um, I am currently Boomtown. Um, I use Sisu, and currently we're Boomtown, but we're probably going to jump off um, off of it here in the next month. So. Um, Sisu and Boomtown are fully integrated, so there's no Zapier needed. Um, awesome, awesome tools, especially when the agents just get to stay inside the CRM. So I think I think one of the questions I had is, as a leader, how do you use that? I know you might be a u new user, but how are you using Sisu to you know, help your agents accomplish their goals and stay productive? I think I think what agents are, are have a problem with is self-awareness. They don't know what they're doing with their time. Like I, I treat my con, I time clock like crazy. Um, but like, I, I think they can see what's the norm, what their peers are doing, like a successful agent with X number of contracts. Oh, well, they're only working this much. I should at least work that much. So uh, we, we tracked the hours last uh, September, December last year. The stronger agents were making about $95 an hour. And they worked on average 30 hours a week. The weaker agents were like 20 something hours a week. If you're working 20 hours this week, it's, it's really a part-time job. You think about like I think it's interesting. Real estate is one of the few professions where you can make as much money as possible. You can you can call these all day, you can teach them all day, but people don't take advantage or want to do that. That's a really good point. Self-awareness. It's not so much about you explaining what you see in the data, but just showing them the data, isn't it? Yeah, like I, I don't go to try my agent like, hey, you didn't work last week. <laughs> but funny enough, I actually do have all the calendars of my team members and all my team members has my calendar. So they can kind of like see what uh, what like a successful agent they could look like. Um, and then I'm trying to teach them how to like time block certain things and color code it. And so I'm grab my calendar real quick. Um, shall I, I'll just give you a glimpse. Like, so this is how I color code my calendar. Uh, Are we sharing? Yeah, is it here? Yeah. Yep, sorry. There we go. Yeah, so like I, 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 don't, I don't normally work weekends, proud of that. Uh, but blue is working like with clients or making money activities. Green is training our webinars or meetings or lunch appointments, like, like or like stuff like this. Uh, so like I, I track every hour that I work pretty um, intensely down to like, ten minutes if I'm grabbing lunch. So like I, I'm a big time junkie. But but, but even with that said, next week my calendar is super empty. 
Like I'm gonna find things to try to fill it up with. Cause usually this time, um, this time of the year, I'm out on uh, conferences and stuff. I mean, in the this week, I just did the three days in. Man. Just give you an example. Last week, uh, last year, when I, I was traveling for about 120 days out of the year, 130 something where where I wasn't in the Bay Area, but I was managing and growing my business. A lot of networking. Interesting. So I interrupted you on the CSU conversation. You were going to transition to. Oh, um, CSU time and they don't have integration. They have like. No, a, no, I'm sorry. I was I pulled you back to CSU. You were transitioning oh, to another tech, and I interrupted oh. you. I apologize. Uh, and then Jason said, he, "You guys are using Boomtown right now, right? Are, are you guys? Where, where are you migrating to, Jason?" Um, I, I'm actually going to go with IDX Broker. I've had it for years. You know, we do so many stories on our website on Fresh Yes, and there's 8,000 stories. And so it just it worked fantastic. We've never really gotten rid of it. We're going to go back and just really do more with all the content we're putting out on our on our site. He's one of those. He's one of those few guys that has an amazing WordPress site. And I think IDX Broker is one of those great tools that allows you to integrate with WordPress still. A lot um, don't. You got to go like Chime or Sierra or Boomtown. You got to go fully integrated with them, and you can't really do the flexibility. And a lot of talks emailing them or make some changes. It's kind of crazy. IDX Broker has been around for over 10 years, right? They have been. Yeah. yeah. I, I remember um, – how you first got started, I started a business before I even sold that house, like not a single sale. I went to Inman for the uh, reboot, back to the Fort the Real conference. It was like 50 bucks for free that first day. And then I saw, uh, I think Chris Smith on stage or someone talking about uh, IDX plugins. So I, I paid someone, I mean, sadly I spent 200 hours in Wix. With, yeah, doing uh, shopping. I, I literally, like I, I enjoyed that stuff. I spent two hours in Wix doing this, like awesome shockwave based flash player website. I was like, wait, there's no SEO there and everything like was lagging because there's like 10 menus on top of each other. But it looked cool. But it looked really, really cool. <laughs> so um, and then I paid the, I paid a friend I, I built a WordPress and I paid a friend to help me. And I, I was I was the first agent I know about in East Bay that had uh, 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 IDX plugin on my website where you could look for properties on the website. But this was literally like 10, 10 years ago. And that's, I think that's where for this idea broker. I guess they're still around. It, it works. It, it works great. And, uh, you know, you can create those permanent searches like this neighborhood, houses with pools. Yeah. And you can use that link. It's always active. Um, and then when you're like, well, this beer rock shop, right? You know, we do a story on the beer rock shop and say, you know, want to live walking distance of this beer rock shop. Click here and it'll show you every house available within, you know, a mile. You have so much content, it's crazy. I'm looking at it right now. How many years of content is blogging is there on here? Um, 14 years. Wow. Yeah, we actually have an archive site, long story, but a lot of our content sits on the archive because there was some server issue years ago. And so we've never taken the time to move everything back. It's gonna take so much work, but our, our, our original stuff is sitting in an archive. But yeah, it, it, it's, been a, it, it's been a lot of work, but it's cool to have it. You know, like I reference it all the time. You know, um, to, just today we put up a story that it was only a few years old, but it was a video that we did, you know, at a restaurant and it was there. And uh, we, we put it up on the site and it made a lot of sense to do it right now. And, and, and so I love having that archive of information. We can just go in there and search the best burger. People have every story we've ever done about burgers. It's probably 100. Yeah, so many. Well, I, I love it because I was I was researching a restaurant. I Google the restaurant. Jason's website's the first one that has something on the restaurant. And I so because I'm friends, I say, hey, what do you know about this this restaurant? He goes, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so it, it one of our writers, one of our writers wrote that. Yeah, so I don't write everything anymore. I haven't for years. I used to, the first three or four years, I wrote everything. Uh, and then... Uh, I've had a lot of different writers. Uh, Natalie Carrera has been uh, with me from pretty close to the beginning. So if my name's not on it, it, it it's very likely to be Natalie's uh, name on it. Uh, but there, we've had some great authors. It's been a lot of fun. I'm looking at your latest two articles. One, um, the uh, Fresno Protest Progress, and you had like almost 500 shares. This one, something about alligators or toothbrush has almost 1,800 shares. 
That's that was that's the doctor's stock. Oh man, that is insane. That's 800 shares within a week. For you know, it's super important that like, we, like I really work a lot on collaboration. Like what, what kind of what you did? I mean, I didn't even ask you, but when when, when you said you'd you know grace us and be on the show today, you know, you got on social, right? And and, and you did a little self promotion, like promotion for the whole show. Yeah. And, and so one of the conversations I have with anybody that we interview is that we just say, hey, let's work on this together to get as much traffic to both of our sites as possible because we want to share this goodness, right? This this great story. We don't write anything negative ever. We just don't go there. And so it's always in everyone's best interest to collaborate. And then we'll go on Facebook and we'll tag every business, you know, and then we'll go back and comment on their page. We'll help them engage with their audience. And so next thing you know, like, we get a lot of views, you know? Is that, is that being um, a connector in your community or now the virtual community? Like, like Andy, we, we met 10 years ago, right? So you know people that I don't know because we haven't, um, you know, ran each other. And then now, like you know, now that people in Fresno will see this, and people in Oakland will then see someone in Fresno. I think it's just constantly overlapping uh, people to build each other up. Um, you know, finding finding your tribe and growing with each other. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. And you know what's interesting is I've watched Jason. If some of the people and companies only knew that saying yes to that collaboration meant. Like they really understood they were adopting his reach or adopting his audience. They were, there would be more people collaborating so many times. And he and I just talked about this the other day. He collaborates with them and they only have 100 people following them. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, yeah. they get, you know, thousands, if not tens of thousands of audience to see. I mean, your newsletter, Jason, is in the tens of thousands, right? Nice. Oh, we're about 40,000 now. Yeah. We're working hard on it right now. Um, yeah. A uh, hundred thousand by the end of the year, man. Hundred thousand. Huge That's reach. Killer. Yeah. Like for our primary. What, what's the population in Fresno? About Jason's newsletter? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got two. One goes out either Thursday night or Friday morning, and then one on Saturday. Saturday's the one that's been around forever. It's taken the biggest hit from subscribers on and off over the years because of different. Facebook and Twitter and you know it, it's kind of been the one we've experimented with the new one we put out um, it's called hot and happening it's about everything that's going on in our community that one's the hot newsletter right now that one's the one that is open by the most people it's, it's the one that um, it, it's it's the hot one right and, and so we're proud of that one and it's great and the content um, is it unique in it, or is it a blog post turned into email or is it linked to the email it is, it is almost all unique in that one and that's a good point Kenny because that was one of the reasons why our newsletter once upon a time failed was because we were writing the content on the website and then putting it on Facebook and then on Saturday putting it in our newsletter and so that by the time the newsletter hit people had already read all the content either from being on our site or seeing it on Facebook and so people unsubscribed like, like Lots of people, and I, I couldn't figure it out for the longest time. And eventually, I just picked up the phone and started asking people, "Like, you've read this for seven years, six years? Like, what's going on?" They're like, "Well, I'm going to your website directly, or I am going to Facebook and reading uh, these stories. So, what do I need the newsletter for?" That's a good point. So, when we realized that, we, we kind of took a different concept of the newsletter and started putting original content there, or a mix of it. And that helped. So then we were able to get some new subscribers and kind of work it um, moving forward. And so, but the, the hot and happening is just exclusive to the newsletter. So I think that's probably one of the reasons why so many people read it. And they want to plan for the weekend. You know, and so like if we don't put that out until late Friday, we'll get a couple people emailing saying, hey, you know, like I use this to plan. Can you, can you get it <laughs> earlier? So, which is cool that they, they reach out and they tell us that. All right. What do you got? What else do you have to share with us, Kenny? Um, we use Slack a lot. Do you guys use Slack for your offices? We use Facebook Workplace. Okay, I'm gonna um, share my Slack screen real quick. So Slack, if you guys haven't seen it, uh, it's kind of like a social in-house in social network where you communicate with your team or staff. I give you some examples of what we have. So. Articles, any cool articles about the market? Something in here. 
uh, training is really good. Training events. So I, I love this little thing, kind of training that I come across any day. A lot of Inman stuff, EXP stuff, KW, um, someone on YouTube, doesn't matter, Zillow. Anytime I see anyone has a training platform or website that I put in here for my team research, we record our consultations uh, with the consent and approval of the client. Uh, let them know, hey, this is for in-house use and personal. So, so a lot of agents are using prior consultation and recording and share it with the team. We have a channel for offers and contracts. So writing offers, we talk about the situation and we win or lose, we let the rest of the team know so then they have better data. This is what you usually have an office meeting for, right? You talk about these things. But now we have a place to go to it. Uh, we're at EXP. Um, so any, anything to do with EXP, uh, big, big, producers come or big moves or something or training we have it in here uh we have off market channel Let's see this one from our local top agent network um be because only the top 10 percent of agents can be on top agent network um i have an email forwarding filter in gmail that goes here so now my entire um team can see these off market listings Let's see oh i like that yeah and then marketing technology i come across like really great articles all the time um and then or new websites and i'll show with the team so like a lot of the stuff is just cons getting it because then so like most of the agents i work with are new uh my most senior agent on my team is like from november a year and a half ago uh so and then i brought on some people that with a couple years experience but for most part 80 percent of my agents are close to being brand new agents but yet we're able to uh build in a lot of training and marketing and help them build their brand a lot by putting it into resources and then, and then, like, I like how Mar Patson um, at Porchlight in SoCal said, like, anytime that he needs to answer a question to an agent, he'll record it and put it in there. So kind of like same thing. Once If I learn something right away, I, I give it to the team. So, like, my one-on-one -on -one training is pretty limited on the team, but I'm constantly throwing things at them, and they, they can decide what to absorb or not. Dude, I love that. Can you guys still hear me? Yep. So, um, Echo by the way, we, we solved the Echo. What was it? I just put headphones in. It was. Oh, it was yeah. That's why I, I thought about it. I said, Kenny's echoing, I'm echoing, Andy's not. I think we were bouncing in his room uh, or on his speakers or something. So I just asked him to make a switch really quick and sure enough, we're good. So yeah. we have Andy to blame. Good. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Good news, glad we figured it out. Yes, absolutely. Um, I just thought it was all your guys' fault. Um, <laughs> if you guys wouldn't talk so loud. So um, now I lost my train of thought. Canva, we use Canva a lot. Um, I'll, I'll share my screen with, on Canva. I, I'm in Canva pretty much every day. Uh, let's see, share screen. I know what I was going to ask you. Kenny, real quick. Yeah. So when you, you got to, you got to, the, the challenge I see, I love Mark's idea and it's, 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 it's cool to talk about, really difficult to execute. So like an agent on your team is asking you a question. What are you doing to capture that moment without taking twice as long? Because then you're going to go record a video and you've got to squirrel on to the next thing. Also, I, I don't do what Mark does with the video, but when someone asks me a question or, or email, um, I'll give them the answer, but then then I'll, I'll copy and paste my answer of some sort and put it in the marketing channel. Got it, it got and, it. And, uh, and then like a lot of my agents, so I, it's I, I do, I give, I give all these resources, but I, I don't do too much one-on-one -on -one training because I want the agents to build their own style and emails and like how they talk to clients. So a lot of agents, when they have really great templates or intro, intro to buyers or sellers, uh, we use, oh, Mixmax. We use Mixmax a lot where you can hyperlink an email and drop it into, uh, and anyone can access the email with the link. It's kind of like printing a PDF of the email, but we access it to the link. So anytime someone has really great email templates, we'll drop it in, in Slack for everyone else to use. So like, we're, so like a lot of my, a lot of the training I do is helping the team train, cross train each other. Like I, yeah. I, I tell the team, hey, uh, so I have a full-time director of operations. She's nine to five every single day. So I tell the team, like, I only want to spend my time on very advanced stuff and stuff to grow out the team, the day-to-day, -day, the contracts, the um, non-negotiating stuff. She'll, they'll talk to her, but I, I only want to spend my time on advanced stuff and anything medium tier. If someone else knows how to do it, I'll ask someone else to do it for, for me. Someone asks me a question about this. Hey, on Chime, how do you do this? Or how do you get the lead pond or set this up? And I'll, I'll talk to talk to Kim or talk to Dewey. They know how to do it. Right? So a lot, a lot of yeah. time I, I redirect my team members to someone else as I'm building out more sophisticated things. Yeah, good, awesome. So you're less 
reactive and more building a resource library for your team. Yeah, and I'm really proud of the library. We only had this since January, but we used it at Climb Real Estate for a couple of years. So there was a lot of stuff uh, lingering from that. Uh, so like, I, I just hate repeating or anything more than doing things more than once. So if I, if I see my catch myself doing something more than once, I'll find a way to, to like make it easy for the team. So like, it's great. Like I, I have ideas that come at me like a couple times a week that I, I didn't think about before. Um, like my time fairies pivot spreadsheet, which you're supposed to track your you know calls and conversations, stuff like that, which I just showed you, we do it. So, but it doesn't, we don't have a space for that to set goals for the month. Um, so I'm thinking before last year, we used to use Google type form every, every Tuesday before the meeting, people would type in number call, like track their stats and, and then we'll put it up for everyone to see. Now CSU has replaced that. But now like how the, how do we track what agents uh, want goals are? Now, like tomorrow, I'm gonna work on building a Google type form um, where people will track their, their their buyer deals they want to do in the GCI and all that, and then that way we upload it, and then we'll have one place for everyone to look at what everyone else has put up. And then, and because then some of our a lot of agents are like, oh, I'm gonna do four deals a month. I'm like, I'm not sure you know what it takes to do four deals a month. Like, I I need a team of many agents to do four deals a month in my market. Uh, but I was like, great, you should do it. Okay, but you're out, then then we can see where your hours are not consistent with that. You're, you're saying this goal, but it just it's just bringing people down to earth. We appreciate people making big goals, but we want to guide them and make, making small steps on that. So, so like, is your is your Google form going to have formulas to reverse engineer what it takes, or is it the place where they're listing out the lead measure things that need to be done? Uh, for for now, it's just going to be setting setting goals. Because Tom Ferry sends me every quarter, and I, I appreciate that. Yeah. So I want to bring that. I was like, oh, we'll just copy this and give it to the team. My team is in, in coaching. So inside of Sisu, there's a place to do that. Oh, is I, I, I under, under, your, under your admin tab, all the way up in the upper right under admin, there is a goals deal, and you can set goals by the month for the year. You can even incorporate seasonality, plus or minus 10%, et cetera, based on what your market does year over year. And then when you look at the dashboard and you can have the love thing I love about Sisu is the ability to push it to an external screen mm -hmm. and have a dashboard running of where are we at, you know, where's the, who's the leaders in the office right now. And you can pick the metrics of what you want to have on that dashboard. I'm but like, when I, you're looking at your individual dashboard, it's always going to be your actual over your goal for that period of time that's in the date fields. It's awesome that you can break it down. So then instead of having your Google, you can have everything incorporated into one spot. Yeah, and CSU's added, also CSU's added task now. Uh, I think it's just in beta, but um, they've added those. Uh, CSU's doing a good job. So look, I want to keep, I mean, I think CSU's great. We've got Slack. It's not and, a commercial uh, for CSU. No, uh, <laughs> Asana, I use Asana a lot. I'll, I'll log in Asana, my class. I, I could never get my head around Asana, but I gave it a shot, Kenny. It didn't sit with me. What do you me. guys use for uh, task management? So that's my, so I wrote down, I mean, and I'll cover some of these, not all of them, but I, I wrote down real quick, like all the tech we use. And I wrote a big thing, said my big struggle and task management for me is my struggle. I, I, I keep trying different things and I, nothing ever sits well with me. Mm -hmm. But Asana came close. We used Monday um, and now we're using Airtable. We use Airtable. So Airtable's, actually the staff has, gotten they're they're down with Airtable. So we've got especially our marketing team. So our marketing team has really got Airtable dialed in. And so without that, I don't know what we would do. But me personally, I, I, that's something I'm just not I don't I'll, know. Show you, so with, uh, I'll show you with what tasks, you know you could go to tasks for transactions, you can go to Sisu with the beta. Trello that's is the big project management tool that we use. Use so Trello we, okay. Yeah we use we use uh use Trello for some of our stuff too. Uh, we use Asana to run our listings. So on every listing, we have a, a checklist. This is this. I'm not in the right account, but I give you. But this is a good example. So usually, uh, it will say my assistant's name next to it, our partner agent. But we use it to check off every little thing we need to do for a listing, like down to folio, send out postcards, make sure you do coming soon, all that create brochure stuff like that. And then we do we do use Airtable too. I'll show you. Uh, from different things. Um, Airtable is actually where I keep all my seller leads. You won't see this on here. You're only seeing the stuff we signed off on. Um, but here, like you, you put it by the address, the city, the partner agent, a link for the disclosures. In Oakland, we deal with a lot of sewer lateral and sidewalk compliance. 
Uh, so we we'll, we typically have a box over here too with that. Uh, and then these are deals we've closed. You can kind of see like short notes on it. So the way we, we, we work our sellers uh, pipeline is not off of the name. We do it off the address. Cause you know, it's, it's good. We are working with a large, uh, larger amount of volume. Uh, and we also use it to track our lot boxes because these things are very expensive. Yes. <laughs> like I still lose them from time to time or in people's cars, you know, like, but uh, we, we use it for this. Uh, one thing that was super helpful was open houses last year. Let me um, show off. So open houses last year by the month, you can see like June, I mean, obviously June, let's pick summer when it's hot. Um, uh, it's kind of weird with the- Wow, look at all that data. That uh, I mean, imagine it was just this part, right? Imagine we had, I don't know, here, just, just these top seven or eight listings on the market. Uh, we, we can track who's doing the open house that weekend. I like that. Yeah. And, it's, and on the, on the app is really nimble too. Like it, it just floats around a lot easier. Cause I like, so Airtable, this thing I'm showing you is like Google sheets on steroids. And the cool part is this is free. There's really no cost to, uh, to use Airtable unless you want to get crazy. So like, I don't pay for any of this stuff. Uh, and then here's listings we lost or closed or sold. Just, it's just good for tracking a lot of different things. Um, yard signs. Oh, for onboarding. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, and then, so we, we use this to buy, figure out who has yard signs and let me do onboarding. And then we, we use Google sheets for on, our onboarding process. We actually dumped, started using Asana for the EXP onboarding. It's kind of confusing. We're trying to make it easy and it's hasn't been that easy yet. Uh, is, uh, I actually just switched to Sisu for the EXP onboarding. You, oh, oh, for the task list. Uh-huh. Yeah, my, my thing the thing with my assistant, like we we, we keep switch I, I keep switching tools around and she freaks out a lot of times. So like so <laughs> it's a hard no. Right now I was like, hey, can you at least just look into this and see what changed? And they're like no. notion, notion uh, the IO or something is what Chris yeah. Smith, the creator. And it's supposed to replace C I'm sorry, supposed to replace Asana and Airtable, but you know what? It's just too much. I, I use Monday. We were very, very happy using Monday for a year. Um we using I think it used to be called the post. So we use it during that time too. Um, here's our onboarding checklist. It's so like when agents join our team, like there's never anything, there's never a time they don't have anything to do. I was like, all right, you don't need to do. Why don't you just, um, you know, go do, figure out something from the onboarding that you haven't done yet. But, and then I can really tell if they just going to be successful, successful or not based on if they've completed the onboarding and how fast they attack it. Cause some agents that we have never shown up or they just don't do it. Um, there's something we use, uh, Google sheets for. Let me see what we have. High note, absolutely love using high note. It's a closing platform. Let me, I'll log in my high note, but I'll show you what the, um, so right now I need to work on two of these tonight. This is a uh, listing presentation and this is what our listing presentation looks like. It's oh, a I saw this when we spoke together uh, up north. Uh, this was great. I love this. Yeah. So imagine you're my client and I send you this. This is what it looks like for you. Uh, I, I went on this list appointment Monday already. So I'll send you this. And then when you look at what I've sent you, like it's a portfolio of everything that we do for a listing. So single page website, um, this really neat single page website. We use a website called pillar. Uh, so I'm jumping around, but I'm, I think this will be more fun like that. Uh, so this is pillar super cheap too. I'll show you the pricing. Uh, out there, scroll to this. Oh, it says super cheap right here. <laughs> uh, you can build these really fancy uh, websites for your property within seven minutes. And the pricing on it is this. And what I what I like the most about it is not just because it's fast to build it, but the websites look really good. And then here's and then you can buy the domain right on the website, and it's done in ten minutes. Cause before you would probably be buying it off godaddy.com and you wait for it and then you just link it and mass forwarding all this weird stuff. Uh, now you can just go to these web, you can just buy, build it on there and have a website up and running within, um, should be within like, uh, under 10 minutes. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then, so that's what it is. And we use Brox Brownie. I'm sure you guys have heard that for virtual staging. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's, here's the listings that we have built it. And the high note. So that's one thing. You're a seller. You're you're looking at this. Uh, here's my listing presentation. We just built that out today. Um, 
you can look at the listening presentation file while you're in the platform. Oh, he changed it without having to leave the, the program. So here's my, my you know, uh, brochure, whatever you guys would have. And then an agent on my team built that, this out entirely in Canva. Um, and then what else do we have? Here's home light. If you click here, you go to, you'll go to my home light page. You'll see that I'm top 1% home light agent. Uh, and then next thing on here is uh, we, a copy. Let me update this. This is a copy of our brochure. And then cool part of the seller just jumps in and they can kind of see how we work on it. A, yeah, CMA right here. So you remember, you're, imagine you're the seller. You're going through this really, really easy experience of working with us. Hey, here's our marketing. Now this is the property value of my home. Here's a quick spreadsheet. Um, oh crap, I gotta redo that. Um, this is supposed to link to a blog on listing agreement. I need to just update the link. And also I have a sample listing agreement in this file. It's just, I think it says Mr. and Mrs. Seller somewhere in here. Oh, wait, wait that was a real seller, okay. Um, it goes to our, <laughs> cause I forgot, this is an actual example, this isn't a preview. Uh, but, if, but if you guys want to check this out, you can go to bit.ly, bit.ly slash, um, let me check, I have two of them, slash sell your home faster. And you can, you can see, and then this is linked right on um, my Zillow site. So right now, like what, people who look me up online on Zillow, you can, you, they will actually see my entire buyer's presentation and, and listing presentation. So rather than wait for someone to call me and then I present for those websites, I actually present first and then they like what they see, they'll call me. I, hey, if somebody is watching right now, or maybe Jason, you can do it on the admin side. Could you type that bit.ly slash sell your home faster link absolutely. and that way our audience can share? Um, hey, it, hey, Kenny. Yeah. That was worth the price of admission a thousand <laughs> times over right there. That was awesome. You went through that so fast on high note. So could you could you just like clarify something real quick? Yeah. You're, you're building – a um a sharing site for every client every seller uh yeah well once you build out the website on every thing I, I had to make a lot of changes because i lost like because i came out of esp in january now i don't have a climb single property website i don't have some climb um uh, you know links or blogs um so now i had to re re rebuild some of the assets uh but when but for every single high note really the only thing that i change on it is the intro I usually will uh, say, hey, it's great. Thank you for your call today. We look forward to working with you on your home in this neighborhood, in this city. Uh, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're excited to meet you on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Like, so that intro gets changed. And then inside each file, the only thing, um, material thing that gets changed is the CMA report and the spreadsheet. Like right here, these two things I'm highlighting are the only two things. Everything else remains the same. So when you're building these out, you can kind of tweak them over time. Let's see, so you can see like these are past appointments I've been on, and you you just change two things and you have a report. <clears throat> so so for a seller out there, you got the phone like, hey, let me have some time, let me work on a presentation for you. Um, they don't need to know that it only takes me maybe half an hour or less to do the CMA. The rest of it is already pre-built. As as your like physical listing presentation, right? You're not creating new access, yeah. whether whatever company you're at. This is just just a cool. Uh, digital version of that. Yeah, that's great stuff. And then um, Canva. I mean, I, I absolutely love using Canva. We rebuilt our entire marketing. Everything we do in marketing is built into here. I'll show you, show you some stuff that we've been working on. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close. The Contra Costa approved my new DBA. So now I'm waiting for DRE to approve it. Uh, but we're launching fast real estate brokered by ESP Realty, and we're kind of trying to bring that nationwide. Um, Love that. Yeah. Because it's a cool brand. I mean, Climb, Climb, Climb Real Estate was supposed to franchise out. They stopped. So I was like, you know what? Why well, stop there? Uh, we're, we're keeping the movement alive. Here's just examples of our postcards. This stuff is so easy to use. Here's, you want to just change out a logo like that? Boom, done. Uh, brokered by ESP. If I want that in different color or black, you just change it. So all you're, this blowing, stuff. you're blowing some people's minds right now. I guarantee it. <laughs> um, so that's that's our postcards. We let me see. Here's our presentation. I, I didn't build this. I give, give props to Julie, a brand new agent on my team. She has a really great eye for design. Uh, she created this entire presentation from scratch. So now wow, that's both. great. And now my my entire team uses it. 
So every time someone builds something, so we're, that's why I like I don't infl- I teach my team how to do things, but I don't um, tell them what to do. So like I, I want them to learn and figure it out. So I'm telling like you want to get better in camera, spend spend time there. And then now when they're doing this, I we're, we're resharing or using each other's assets. Um, so I, we, I mean, I love this transportation. I think it's better than what I had before. Um, and then most of this stuff is borrowed from there. Here's our, I mean, here I spend a lot of time making these things, but you see how easy it is to just move things around. Um, playing with some, like, this was our, so funny story. Um, we go by hashtag team fast, but then I got flagged by EXP and the DRE it says, I can't use the word fast team fast. Cause then in California, legally you have to have your last name in the word team or group. Um, so I, I'm in the process of uh, legal zoom right now to uh, move my last name, Kenny Trung to my middle name. And so my new name will be Kenny Trung fast. So I can uh, comply with DRE. <laughs> Dude, that's commitment right there. <laughs> um, let me see. Some boring stuff here. I made all this in Canva. I was playing around with different ideas for a logo, and this is what we landed on. But this stuff is really easy to do. This is uh, this is Kenny's brain. Oh, <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I feel like it has a luxury feel to it. And then, like, you can easily make changes like this. Just change the font. Um, I'm just randomly pick something. I don't know what's happening. Here, let's try it real way. See, and then you just change it larger. So it's, it's really easy to design your own stuff uh, by just playing around with it. And I'll show you an example of a buy presentation, which I'm really um, excited about. Here it is. Wait, no, that's not the one. Uh, again, Ju- Julie on my team made this, and now my entire team uses this. And Julie didn't know how to use Canva or spreadsheets and all that uh, about three months, two months ago. And then during this, now, she, now um, she's our part-time marketing assistant. Cause this is, I, I would not have been able to build this. this is really- Jason, that kind of sounds familiar, right? Yes. <laughs> Certain people rise up. They do. I love that right there. Yeah. I mean, it looks super clean. And we had a PDF from the company. She just printed, we, all we're doing is reworking what we had and making it pretty. So yeah. So now my entire team uses this. Um, that's something else. I, I hate the ESP slide deck. Um, I think it looks terrible. So <laughs> Uh, Julie built it from scratch, rebuilt it. And then this is our unique uh, ESP slide deck. It's it's still a lot of content in it, but I, I cut out some pages. I, I didn't feel it were necessary, uh, but it's pretty cool, right? Like she, this, this wasn't hard to do. It just took a lot of time um, to repeat the process. And now, now, I mean, if you guys go to this, okay. So I'll show you, we, we did all this like marketing, right? And this Canva stuff. Okay. But if you guys go to uh, bit.ly, that slash uh, ESP dash realty. Then you have my high note with all my ESP stuff on there. Like this is from uh, blogging about ESP place and other people's presentations. Uh, here's my slide deck, uh, right growth stuff, the sharing calculator. And then people are saying, okay, well, this brand sucks. Well, if you click here, you can actually see examples of other agents, um, <clears throat> other agents that are have really great marketing <clears throat> um, that are ASP and see their websites. So like the, the usability of this is, is unlimited. It just, whatever you decide on, like that's a deck, you can change it. Um, we made our open house signs on here. We made our, uh, open house that are branded. Um, so like I have a couple people in my, that I recruited that's not to my company, but I still want to help them with marketing. So I've created this fresh content for them. Um, and then here's last one while we're here. This is just random social media posts. So we use Canva to make really funny stuff all the time. Uh, yeah, if anybody's watching who's not familiar with Kenny, uh, like his Instagram is is, is pretty amazing. It, it, <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> it's good yeah. stuff, man. Um, yeah, so so we we use uh, Canva thing. Another tool we use is Homebot. Homebot, if you guys haven't heard of it, they actually partner with CAR, which um, is great for everyone. And I was like, I got to get more people on here. But Homebot, you, and a lot of people who really like Homebot. Homebot is amazing. Like at we use it. Is. Let me see if I can get back get in real quick. Give me a magic link real quick. Yeah, Homebot sends a monthly CMA to your clients. Uh, and on top of that, shows how much they own the property and what else they could be doing with the money. 
Uh, so we have like a 60% open rate. So like 80, 90 of my past clients or seller, potential seller leads are opening up. Uh, it's lagging right now. I'll, I'll see if I can open it later. We're also using, let's see what I have here. MailChimp. I mean, all of our marketing is MailChimp. MailChimp, you should maybe hire someone to do a design. Um, this is a landing page. MailChimp lets you do landing pages now. You can make really easy, basic websites. So right here, if I share you this, if you go to this link up top, um, you, this is what you'll see. So rather on the MLS and providing those super long disclosures.io links, and then we're using property to handle offers, we've create these landing pages for potential agents. Also it's branded, right? So if you're in recruiting, you want to track other agents. This is a good way to showcase your brand. Um, the, we're sending all agents to this landing pages to request to download the soldiers. Um, not, I mean, this goes IO, nothing fancy. Uh, and then we're using Proppy to take, take offers. Do you, do you, have, do you use Proppy for that? Uh, we started, we, we've only gotten two offers so far. We started a couple weeks ago. Again, the market's kind of slow, so we haven't been able to maximize it. Uh, but this is what it looks like for any buyers to potential buyer agent to um, submit an offer on our listing. Yeah, I'm considering it. Yeah, it's cheap. It's like it's like twenty bucks a month only. Like it's it's worth checking out versus manually, you know, um, looking at every single offer that comes in. Oh, it's just it's just a nightmare to have to do that all the time. And you know, yeah. you don't want to miss anything. You don't want to miss somebody asking for. Uh, you know, a credit or, you know, you got to get all those details in. And so probably definitely makes that easier. Yeah. Let me see. So we use MailChimp and we use MailChimp for regular stuff too. Uh, we're, I mean, I used to do a lot of email marketing. I, I don't anymore. Cause kind of funny what you said earlier about email marketing, where you, you found it be smarter to um, post, have a unique content in the email. I, I did some, did something different where I have, I just link to articles and and then the the headers that you see are all on twitter and linkedin and facebook so exactly what you said all, most of my friends and past clients do not read my newsletter anymore because they know if they need to find it it's um i'll show you my like it's, they can literally just go to my facebook page and it's like literally right here at the top you can look at my newsletter so there's really no need for anyone to come here uh but i had a lot of fun doing these newsletters back in the day i used to do them once a week but i I remember, I remember. Yeah, I barely do it once a month now or once a quarter, but uh, this was pretty fun in design. This is, I did this on an airplane trip. It took me six hours. So as soon as I got on to off, I was almost done. Oh uh, my gosh. So this was something I was known for before, but I, I don't do any of that. I really don't do uh, emails anymore. Uh, but it was a great way to build my brand awareness. Now, like 100% all in on Instagram. Uh, social. So these are fancy emails, not telling you, I mean, it, it's for someone to do that would probably take like 15 hours. Um, but these are kind of more what you expect type of emails. Let me see. So for those of you that are watching, like, so I think it's important when you hear like all three of us are using the same thing and it's kind of like tried, true and tested. Um, and so like I'm using MailChimp, um, Andy uses Canva, I use Canva. Um, I'm familiar with Slack. I just haven't used it. Uh, Kitty's mentioned High Note tonight. Pillar, Asana, Homebot is super popular. Andy uses it. Um, a lot of people I coach use it. Um, well, Calendly, I'm a huge Calendly fan, Kenny, and I noticed you are too. Uh, Andy, have you made the Calendly plunge? <laughs> it's in. It's in my email signature. Yeah. Um, you, to, you guys, um, I used to. I used to use Calendly. But I'll show you something. Uh, I like how this is live. This is way better because then to show you guys um, this tool, I want to show you guys. Uh, let's see, let me close this out first. So here's here's Mixmax. This is my this is my favorite tool. Um, what do you call it? Uh, Mixmax. Mixmatch. Yeah, Mixmax. Watch. So you guys use Calendly um, for inbound stuff, but here's what I really like. Um, imagine you're trying to meet, like we're, let's imagine I'm trying to meet with you, Annie, for lunch, uh, 60 minute lunch next week. So what I could do is, is put lunch. We're not, we're not seeing that part. Oh, it's, oh, it's crap. sharing just this screen. Oh, um, let me just, okay, let's try that. There we go. It works. Okay. 
Yeah, so imagine I'm trying to meet with you for lunch next week, right? Uh, I could use this plugin in count, um, Mix Max. Mix Max, got yeah, it. Mix Max. Lunch, um, Kenny and Kenny. So if our lunch is 60 minutes, what I can do is like this. I can pick these time slots that might work for me. Uh, maybe you. Oh, it's much quicker. Right. Just just like that. And then and then I'll email you. It's like, hey, do you need any time to work for you? And then once you click it, it will send a, a automatic email to the both of us confirming that appointment. That's yeah. awesome. So you're using that instead of Calendly. Yeah. So I don't I don't I don't I haven't used Calendly uh, for a while. And then this is what it looks like once someone confirms so it sends out and it is synced with Gmail. So someone will it's a regular it. Google calendar. Invite. Yeah, it's a regular Google calendar invite. And that's it. That way I don't have to go back a second time to check. And some of the other cool things too it has is, um, let's try this. So here's, uh, let's see. Oh, and now I was doing a lot of webinars. Um, I, did, I was on 15 webinars in one week speaking. Um, I you, saw that. That was crazy. Yeah, that was insane. <laughs> I, was, like, I almost got burnt out, but I bought a domain that went to, went to that, you know, single page MailChimp, but makes Mag lets you do this, um, visual URLs. Oh, cool. So watch, uh, fresh bits, right? Kind of like you would, kind of like you would in a comment on social media. Ooh, hold up. Yeah, yeah, you act like that actually. And then you're um, being you're being asked, um, quick question, Kenny. Um, does Mixmax send out text message reminders? Oh, no, just the uh, um, email. It would be the Google Calendar permissions, right? Yeah. And then this is really cool because um, this plugin I'm trying to show you. Like I, I read lots of from here, so I'm just grabbing an article from here. So you're emailing someone, you want to talk about comps or something, um, you, you can pop in and it goes like this. Uh, so, 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 but you, you see the visual part and yeah. then I'll give you an example of like how, and then Mixmax also has this built-in version of video. Um, let me see. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Um, and then also you can insert video, like you just click here and you just, you automatically pop in the video real quick. Uh, like you could, I'm going to record one live really, uh, fast. So imagine I'm trying to send an intro email to a new client or someone thanking them. I can just go like this record right here. Just like bomb bomb. Yeah. Hey, this is just like bomb bomb. <laughs> and then, um, boom, insert the video and you're, you're done. That's it. That's and fantastic. That's mix max as well. Yeah. And this is nine bucks a month. Dude, that's the, that's, that's almost the same price as Calendly with a lot more features. <laughs> the thing is like they do different things differently. So like Eric on my team, he, he always, uh, sends these quick intro emails to buyers. Hey, John, this is Eric with eXp Realty. We just got off the phone about going over my buyer's consultation with you and also send you a list. Let's get that. And then like what we do too is um, for seller consultations, let's try. Here it is. So this is kind of a format that I use for a lot. I teach my team to use uh, when we're talking to a potential seller. Uh, we'll send the intro email and then we'll do the intro. And then we, it also does, you can drop in PDFs visual PDF, so they can read a PDF right there versus it being an attachment. And then on top of that, you can create buttons in the Makes Max email, uh, which can link to different things. Like here, it just links to comps. Or okay, I got I got an application, hold on. Um, Jason, you, you, you tracking what, what I'm tracking? You incorporate what we talked about last week in presenting your offer to the listing agent in a compelling way that is that makes your offer stand out that is clean easy to read and you include like mixmax 
the video from the buyer showing up like that in the email. Yeah. You include the offer PDF showing up like that, super clean with the bullet points. You just trumped every other offer out there. So everybody in Fresno, don't do that, please. Let's <laughs> just let our offers stand out. <laughs> yeah, like here's here's combination between okay, two things, right? Now we're mixing mix max. You can see here what high note, and now we're presenting an offer uh, to a seller on on high note. Hey there. Hi. Uh, that one had 30 offers, so we, we didn't win. Um, Come on. But you can see how, how we set this up. We have the personal leather, the purchase agreement, the disclosure sign, the proof of funds. It's just like it's just way cleaner. Um, so when you're doing that, it makes you stand out um, past everyone else. Man, I okay. love this. This was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so that's – I mean, that's some of the tools we're, we're using right now uh, for team. And the cool part is like – so another like stuff I have is a secret. It's just when people are joining us, we kind of um, teach them to solely incorporate in their business. Man, I, I love it. I love it. Um, I saw on your your email that you're using Copper. I haven't tried that little CRM yet built into Gmail. Do you like it? Do you use it? Uh, I, I just installed it yesterday because I was uh, listening to Inman and Guy Guy and all the side agents who provide it. Um, so so far, I haven't really been able to dive deep into it. I coach, I coach a side agent and um, it's, it's cool, but it loses a lot of the flexibility things that we want in a CRM that are real estate specific. Yeah, mm. side, side, side reminds me of a sidekick or reportive back then where it gives you all the information on the right side about them. Um, but I don't think it's, and then I looked at it today, you can convert people from leads to people. It's not like a sales, real estate sales driven CRM right. where you're kind of moving people through a pipeline. I think, I think there is a use for it though. Um, an agent that I spoke to that's used, um, at least how he talked about his Chime CRM, he only wants to put gold in there. So I think on copper, I might just put like people I've actually engaging, actively engaging into copper. That way I have a more like a tighter, smaller CRM and copper lives inside your inbox. Um, so you're not going anywhere else to, to use it. Yeah. Um, what else we got here? Uh, I know we're, we were hitting so kind of like our like we've gone over an hour, which is crazy. Uh, but as, as, this is a recap for for anybody who's who joined us kind of late. We Sisu, Slack, Canva, High Note, Pillar, Asana, Homebot, uh, Vidyard, uh, Mixmax. I think that's probably my. I knew of High Note because I saw you present on it. And, I, and I'd forgotten, and so now I got to jump on that and, and, and take some action there. And I love mix match. That that's that's fantastic. That was yeah, my jam. I, high note, high note. The way you're using it, I was familiar with it, but the way you're using it, off the charts, completely different. Yeah, um, Mark's intention, because like Mark, uh, show you the founder's intention for the product is for uh, mostly to present the offers, but I just I don't use that as much. I found kind of like another way maybe you guys could use it is maybe highlighting different neighborhoods uh, in your area and then have the link go directly to it. It's kind of like a fancy website in a way. Uh, you want to hyper-target something. Yeah, love that. And then we didn't talk about, it's a couple other ones that I use. I use Rev a lot. Rev? Yeah. Oh, for words? For captions? Yeah, so uh, if anybody's looking for tech like or looking to create content for their Instagram or Facebook, you can just go into Rev, record like if you, if you like when I drive, like, you know, I, oh, I have a thought about this. I can record it into Rev and then hit the transcribe button. And for like nothing, uh, I get a transcription of everything that I said. And then I can take that and I can take a sentence or a paragraph and I can use it for social media or use it for an article that I'm writing. So I use Rev like all the time. Isn't uh, it pretty inexpensive too, like a buck a minute? Yeah. Like, yeah. Where, did, uh, where did that content go? So it just, it, it, if you go to the, the website on rev like you could it has kind of like a like an editor like a word editor there and you can just copy and paste from there and then you can put whatever you want so like i had a, a an assistant working for me for a period of time and what she would do she was on the east coast she would text me um like the question of the day like you know uh, let's give an example like how to improve your buyer's chance of getting their offer accepted and so i'd wake up in the morning on the way to the gym i'd, I'd have that 
question from her. And so I could drive my 30 minutes to the gym and then I could answer that question by just talking into Rev. And then she would log in later in the day and the answer would be there all typed up. And then she could take that and she could put it into a blog post or like a social media piece or something like that. So save me a ton of time. And I do better talking than typing anyway. So it, it just doesn't really Rev work the other way around, Jason, where you can also use it to do captions for your videos. Yeah, you can upload a video if you'd like. So it does YouTube now too. So you can upload it into YouTube and then it's super cheap. If you have the computer do the transcription, like, I mean, 15 cents or something. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's almost nothing. And then, um, if you want a person to do the transcription, then it's a little bit more, but not more than a dollar a minute. Um, so if you've got a seven or eight minute video and, and they'll do a word for word, commas, everything, it's it's great. Um, cool. So that, that's Rev. Uh, I use that. Well, what do you use to, um, cause I, I just recently bought a GoPro mount for my car. Cause I like that idea. Cause I, cause I feel like driving a car, you could, you could be doing something other than music. Lately I've been doing a lot of, I'm not a big podcast guy, but lately I've been doing uh, Gary Keller's podcast, which has been really great. But I'm like, I should be, I could just be driving and speaking way easier. Are you using an iPhone or using special equipment or anything? Just iPhone. Oh. Yeah, just iPhone. If I had the window down, I'd, then I'd need a microphone. But yeah, just my iPhone. It works great. We can put it on my desk during a meeting. Like, so if we want to go back and listen to what we said and then we want a transcript because someone said something like brilliant, then it's right there for us. Um, so yeah, that's great. And then, um, G mass G M A S S is one of my favorite tools. Um, G mass is a, a free plugin. The guy accepts donations, which is great. Um, uh, but it's free. And what it does is I'm frozen. I think on Facebook for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your, your face is frozen. I don't know how to, I'm, uh, I'm gonna come back in. Let me see if that works. You want me to pull you out? Okay. All right. We'll grab Kenny when he comes back, but GMAS is uh, a plugin that allows you to do some mail merge stuff. So you can have a, a, a spreadsheet, a, a Google sheet with first names, last names, let's say their dog's names. Um, and then you can send an email out and it'll put their first name into the email wherever it's bracketed. Let me put Kenny back in doesn't here. It, doesn't it also allow you to sequence the number of emails per hour so you don't get tagged? Yeah, sure. and so that's that's the big deal. So if you're going to send out an email to like let's say every realtor in your area of four thousand people, um, you could, you know, uh, compose the email. You can add video. It's, it's it's Gmail, right? It's a plugin, so you can add video, PDFs, whatever you want to add, um, and then tell it to send so many, um, and, and it'll follow the rule. It knows Gmail's rule for spamming. So it'll just send so many emails out per minute, per hour, per day, so that you don't get shut down for quote unquote spamming when when, when you're really not. I looked like um, so actually yeah. back then, but it was really expensive uh, for a year. And I I, I looked in GMAS, they were showing like really sophisticated things. Is it is it easy to use? Super easy, super easy to use. Um, like I use it probably every day to some degree. Um, I've heard I've heard of good things. I'm sorry, Jay. Go ahead. Oh, I so see you can pull like, so if you had Kenny, if you had MailChimp, you got a list in MailChimp, you can just export your list really quick, put it in a Google sheet and then use GMAS to send out something a little bit more personal or, you know, spread out those campaigns. I think the open I, rate is way, way higher too. Cause you're mailing not from like a domain. That's why I, exactly I love using actually way back um, to like, but then contention is weird. Cause MailChimp, you can do those really fancy looking emails. But then you want to do that in GMAS, you have to copy and paste everything and some things might throw off. But I think these tools could be good for like most emails. Well, and that's been the biggest challenge that I've heard is that the, the MailChimp servers are being used by significantly, like tremendously large corporations doing email marketing. They get tagged for, or get on this, in 2020, they get on these lists for spam, which all those lists have got, those rules have made it harder for people to do email marketing. Now all of yeah, a sudden that MailChimp server is no, right? no good for any of us. Say again? Yeah, I think Compass is blacklist from uh, MailChimp because a lot of my friends can use it. So they had to yep. go in constant contact, I think. Yep. Yeah. So GMAS is a good one to A-B test with. Um, so GMAS I wrote down that we haven't talked about yet. And then um, text request is something I've been using. Um, I'm, I'm going to move to something a little different. 
but but text request is like a mass text messaging uh, program, and so you can have a different list of people, and then you can schedule text messages out to them. They have to opt in, of course, but um, and then you can reply. It, it, it's a good program. I've been really happy with it. We've used it for my daily wake up text. For I'm waiting for mine, my friend. I just requested it. Do, do you do you uh, pre 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 write those? Guys, a couple of friends that posts your stuff every day. No, 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 no. Okay. Like tomorrow's was written. Will be written tonight. Um, and, and so I think that's that's why I just do the Monday through Friday. But Kenny, I just switched over to Community. Community. So, yeah, you know, like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk and, and different people. I think Tom has one now, has a community number where, hey, text me at. And so um, I'm excited to be using community now. Like I just started the campaign today um, where I said, hey, I'm starting to move over all my daily wake up text people too. Um, so, so what does it do? Is it, is it from uh, Disciple? Am I on the right page? Um, it's community.app, I think, or just community.com. I think it's, I think it's .io, isn't it? Let's see. I got the text response back from you today. Dot .com. Dot .com? Yeah. Like, like uh, my, da my dashboard's dashboard.community.com. Um, and so you can create audiences, which yeah. I think is cool, because I'm really down with knowing, you know, the stuff about the people I connect with. And so let's say that if I reached out to everybody and I said, Hey, there. What is that? Is that yours? Oh, yeah. dot community dot com. This this is going in my marketing channel in Slack this very second. Okay, yeah, yeah, this is great. It. So here's what you do. Like, so I could go out to my I could go out to my social media network and I could say, look, hey, if you love beer, like text me back beer. Like, tell me because I'm gonna hook you up with like some tickets to this beer festival. And so text me back with beer. And so everyone who text messages the number with beer, they go into a list or they call them a community of people who like beer. And so the, I know now I know that Michael and John and Mary and Sally, I know they all like beer. Let's say that I had um, look, if you're an investor and, and you really you want to buy property and you're looking to, um, you know, to, to flip it, to flip it, like, you know, text me back with flip. Right. And that way, when I get an amazing property, that'd be good for an investor. I know who to reach out to. And so everyone who texts me that same number, the word flip ends up being in the community or the list called flip. And so then when I have an amazing property that I want to reach out and and market, I can go and text all those people and say, hey, here's the property. And I know they're interested in it. Right. So it's not going to feel like it's spam to them. Or I could just say, hey, text me. Let's have conversations. And uh, they can just be conversations about whatever. But I really love the fact that, you know, and people can be in multiple communities. Right. So if over time I learn that I got a guy who likes wine and he happens to like dogs. And by the way, uh, he's an investor uh, in, in the Fresno area. And so he's looking for property all the time. So I've got three different things that I can connect meaningful um, with uh, with that person. And so and it's not based upon how many text messages you send. All these any kind of other mass texting program that I've found, like they charge you how many text messages. So like sending rich content like video or PDFs or photos like really add up and make it super expensive to be able to maintain. Community does it by contacts. So you can have, you know, a thousand contacts or 5,000. However, it's unlimited, but their pricing is based upon the contacts, not by how often you communicate with them. And I, I, like just, that. I love it. So um, Long, Duane, I think he's in Minnesota or um, so he has – He's a broker owner. He's like 500 agents. I mean, I saw him speak at the Asian Real Estate Association panel. He uses live broadcast. So for every holiday, you know, hey, happy, um, Merry Christmas, or hope the family's well. He'll drop like 500 text voice voice messages going out one time. So I think that I haven't used it yet. I I, I went to uh, Tom Ferry Sales Edge, uh, and they're speaking on that. Signed up right away. This is two years ago, uh, and I still haven't sent it out yet. There's high broadcast. I've only used it a couple times. Um, I have it. It takes work to pick the bright people. I think this is kind of cool because you, the lists are created by the audience themselves. That's it. Yeah, uh, created by the audience themselves, and I and I love that about it. So, I'm 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 excited to be able to do that, and then it, it would give you reminders like, hey, you haven't text messaged this person in a while, um, and and so it's gonna, which that's something I loved about contactually in its early days, is it would say, right. hey. You haven't contacted anybody in this bucket in 30 days. Like now, contactually messed up by 
adding that snooze button. You know, I think they should have never given people the option to hit snooze. It should have like banged them in the head, contact, contact, contact. But I love that community is doing that. Like I've got some reminders right now on people. Where, where are some, what are some, let's brainstorm some groups. Like you said, uh, flippers or bear lovers. What else do you think could be good groups? He, he has this crazy idea about Oakland A's fans. <laughs> cool. If you're an Oakland A's fan. But really, I mean, anything that, that they're like, good at community, right? Like open rates on emails, like for my newsletter and stuff, is so good because it's like meaningful content. So if I'm connect, if I'm texting people information that's interesting in them, they're going to reply, and we're going to build that, that that relationship. And so, um, and you can have up to five thousand, I think. Well, let me quote that. At least five hundred. It might be five thousand. It's ridiculous amount of communities. Even at five hundred, would be a ton. So. Um, you know, whatever you'd want them to, to, to you know, to be in. Uh, you could buy neighborhood, you know, hey, if you're you're interested in buying a home, like we've got neighborhoods in Fresno, I'm sure you have them in, in your area, Kenny, where that, that there's never a home that goes on the market. Like we've got this little community over on Champlain, what is, no, Friant, what is that one? Where the Bistro is. Yeah, over there by Starving Artist Bistro. There's a neighborhood over by Starving Artist Bistro Andy and, and Kenny, that's like a uh, Finston area by Woodward Lakes. There has not been an active listing in that in that market since early 2018. Wow. I have a buyer who will buy tomorrow and I have contacted everybody in this community. I've, I've, I've door knocked, I've left the messages, I've mailed them stuff. Like no one wants to sell, right? But like, so if I had a list of people like, hey, if you were a buyer looking in this neighborhood, like text me, this is the neighborhood's name. And, you know, like I will let you know the second that one comes up and then I could hit all of them up at one time with something meaningful to them. So that would be an example of, of a way you could use it. I, I, I know like, well, in Oakland, like every time I see something about like merit or some area, like I had to then, then think of all my clients that have like, um, live there and then send them a look, look for them, send them text individually. So I, I think that could be really good. Kind of like my, micro blogging. Cause not everyone's watching our stories and all of that. So, so I, I think, I think that could be really powerful. Dumb question. Why wouldn't you just use tags inside of your CRM for this? Well, difference between an email versus a text message. But your your CRM, my CRM, Kenny's, they can all text clients. It's well, so it what, what phone number is the text from? Is it a unique, new unique number? Same it thing is, as the way the community is. Yeah. It's a unique number to me, yeah, 559 area code, but yes. We, I think we, we could, it's just, I mean, not all my, not, I'm on Chime for the last four years and now all my past clients are on it. I was actually trying to look for another CRM just for my own thing, but I, maybe KB Core because it's free. Um, but I, I like this because texting is a lot easier. I don't know. I feel like community, if they're new, they're going to be putting a not, lot more features in it versus yeah. here's a tag in this neighborhood. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. It, I mean, it's it's been out for a little while now, but... Um, they're starting to let some more of us in, which is great. Um, so I'm going to be really brainstorming on how I can use it a lot. And I think it's right up my alley. So I'm, I'm, I'm super excited about it. Um, is that what celebrities are? I mean, lots of celebrities are like texting anyone, but I, JLo is in it, you know, um, a rod, you know, like it's all these celebrities are in it and, and, it's, and they, everybody's enamored. Hey, text me. I'll respond. <laughs> Right, but all, it, all it, back. you know, and, and you can you can you can have one admin, but really, they really talk a lot about the fact that they want you to be the person writing the text messages, and you know, and and, and of course, they don't control it. You can you know have someone log in if you wanted to, but like when I the way I'm going to use it is it will be me. Um, I don't use a Mac, so I've never had that unique feature to be able to text message people from my chat. Um, but I think it's, and it gives you their birthday. It gives you some stats. It almost looks like it's a dating site when, they, when, they, when a contact comes over. So it'll say their name, female, 34 years old, from, and they'll give you their town. So they fill out some basic information when they register. And so it's kind of funny to see see them come across that way. But um, I think it's going to be great. Could be good for hey. referrals. Uh, I'm thinking from like an agent standpoint you know, want to, cause I can't share my Slack with everyone. The train, the training channel you saw that has up every day. Um, I do invite other agents on it. There's about a hundred of us, uh, because on Slack you invite outside guests for free. 
if it's one channel but if you you have full member it's like 15 bucks a month i'm not paying that for strangers but i feel like this chat thing could be good like one of the good marketing tips you know follow this channel i want to get yeah. best best script i don't know best script of the day just brainstorming so that i could build a huge referral network because facebook i mean facebook is very noisy so is instagram so if you have that mini i think that's purpose right a mini community mini culture wrapping around yourself um this higher levels of engagement yeah and imagine inviting them to different things I, and I, or you're providing resources for agents you know like i mean just like someone wanted information about exp just text me back exp yeah right? and then then it, ta it creates that community and then i can provide them with all the resources that they could possibly need right there to their phone and so they could be running around town and go oh here it is right like you know what i'm going to call right now um you could give them your i don't know if you could give them your uh mix max but you could give them a calendly link in there what, what, what if i stab the little signs across all across town interested in real estate texas number and it sends them a high note and they're in my esp community and then like i don't know here's marketing tips on how to get started in real estate bam like like yeah. he just he just he just gift wrapped the entire presentation right there <laughs> into, into like, buy a house, or you know interested in, interested in buying house. i don't like you know we buy those people who we buy houses for cash or something right we just build a whole community around that yeah. yeah so it'll be a lot of fun hey wow yeah this was a good game it was very long yeah this was good kenny thank you so much like you gave us a, a an hour our community right and, and and andy and i an hour and a half of your time i super appreciate it man like uh, i'm sure andy feels the same way if we can ever add some value to to your team or anything just 100%. call her i'd be happy to to, to do whatever you needed sure. um do it do a sales meeting or something that, that would be great we're gonna we're gonna bring uh bring re bar camp back that you Dude, know we've talked about that you would it should be digital though. we could literally just do that digitally somehow yep oh, not a bad idea i think actually you could do this is a this is a exp conversation but you could actually do a bar camp in exp and create private rooms all be in one big group, and then all of a sudden you have the circles for the private conversations. All right, we're gonna get those guest passes out. <laughs> Love it. Cool. All right, hey, thank you everybody for watching Game Seven. Uh, we we really again a big shout out to, to Kenny. Well, it's gonna be Kenny Trong fast uh, <laughs> at some point very soon, uh, so that he can uh, use that fast agent officially with the Department of Real Estate. So uh, thank you for our watchers. Uh, any questions? Again, just just Google Kenny fast. Uh, or follow some of the links I put in chat, and uh, that's how to connect with Kenny. Or what's your Instagram, Kenny? Uh, fast Kenny agent. underscore fast. Okay. There you go. Thank you, everybody. Andy, any parting words? No. Uh, game off. Game seven is over. Thank you, Kenny. It is. All right, we'll see you guys next week. All right, man. See ya.